Okay, I'm here in my vSphere client. I've got two ESXi servers. I've got vCenter. And notice here I have a VCD DB virtual machine. So this is going to be my vCloud director database virtual machine. It's running Microsoft SQL, or it will be running Microsoft SQL, I should say. Notice that it is a single CPU, 3 gigs of RAM. It's got an IP address here, 10.0.1.185, which I created a static or alias for over on my DNS server. So let's go ahead and go to the console of this virtual machine. So the new SQL Server Installation Center has launched here, and I'm going to click New Installation. I'll accept the license terms and say Next. Alright, so we'll take all the default features here to be installed. I'm going to rename the instance. I'm just going to call it VCDDB. That's our vCloud Director database. So we've got a new name for the instance. I'll click Next here. We're going to take the default on the service accounts. I'll click Next. Now here it's very important that we change to mixed mode and then we're going to enter our password for the SA account. We don't want to use only Windows Active Directory. We also want to have our own local SQL accounts. And later we'll be adding a user called VCD Manager. I'll click Next here. I'll click Next again. And now SQL Server Express is being installed. This will take just a minute. I'll be right back. With our SQL Server 2008 R2 installation completed successfully, we'll click Close. All right, we can close out the Installation Center. And now let's go down to the Start menu. And I'll go in here to All Programs. And we'll go ahead and run the SQL Server Management Studio, which was included in the version of SQL Express that I downloaded because I opted for the one with the management tools included. If you just download the regular SQL Server Express, you won't have the management tools, so keep an eye out for that. Now, I should point out that if you're doing a vCloud Director production installation, you're probably not going to use Microsoft SQL Express. You're going to use the full version of Microsoft SQL. Of course, you can leave that up to your DBA. In the case of the proof of concept we're building here for the Wirebrain Coffee Company, we're using SQL Express because it's free and unlimited, and it's a small download, and it's quick to get up and running. So I'll run the Management Studio here. For the server name, if you recall, we named our instance VCDDB. So you actually need to type dot and then backslash here, VCDDB. I'll go down and we'll change the authentication here to SQL Server Authentication, and then I'll type in the password that I entered when we did the installation. I'll click Connect here. And there you go. We successfully connected. I should point out that I've also created a static DNS entry for this SQL Server that goes to the IP address, and the DNS name is VCDDB. So we're inside the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio here. And the first thing we need to do in here is to create a new account or user account inside SQL that will be used as the owner of our database. So I'm going to right click on security here. I'll go to new and then over to login. So the new login is going to be called VCD Manager. Of course, you can give the login name and the database you create whatever names you want as long as they match up over when you do the installation and configuration of vCloud Director. This is going to be a SQL Server account and we don't want to use Windows accounts. I, at least that's what I've read, so I've just always used SQL accounts here, and I haven't had any problems. I'll type in a password that I know, and then I'm going to uncheck Enforce Password Expiration. We don't want this password expiring on us at some point, and then vCloud Director suddenly not working anymore, because that could happen. So I'll go down here and say OK. I'll expand out security. There's our new user, VCD Manager. The next thing we want to do is to create a new database for vCloud Director. So I'll right click on databases here and go to new database. And we'll give this database a name, vcddb, or vCloud Director database. And the owner of the database is going to be vcd manager, the user that we already created. I'll say OK there. There's the owner. 
And now we need to set the initial size and auto growth rate. I learned about this actually from Kendrick Coleman's blog post over at KendrickColeman.com. He blogs a lot about vCloud Director. He's got a ton of great resources. But this is also inside the vCloud Director installation guide as well as the evaluation guide. So let's go over to Kendrick's blog. I'll show you his blog post so that you know what I'm talking about. So here's Kendrick's blog, Installing vCloud Director 1.5 with SQL Server 2008. It's a great reference for you. Shows us how to create the username there. Shows us how to go into the database. Make sure you configure SQL authentication. Shows us creating the database here. He gives it slightly a different name, but like I said, it doesn't matter. Then configuring the initial size and auto growth. And these are the numbers we'll use here. Initial size for the database is 1,024 or 1 gig with 512 megabyte auto growth and unrestricted growth. Then for the log files, the initial size is 128 megabytes with 128 megs auto growth restricted to two gigs. You don't want the log files, you know, filling up all your disk space. Scrolling on down here, you also need to set something called the collation setting on the database, which is set to Latin 1 General CSAS, and we'll be setting that as well. Also, he's got a script down here that needs to be run on the database. So I'll be uh, running that for you here in just a minute. But with that, let's go back and complete the configuration of our new database. All right, so we said we need to set the initial size for the database. That's going to be 1024. If we scroll over to the right here a little bit, I'll do the drop down on the auto growth. And I'm going to set this to 512 megabytes for file growth and then unrestricted growth for maximum size. I'll say OK there. And then for the log files, again, we're going to set this to 128 megabytes. I'll do the drop down on this, and we'll set it to 128 megabyte chunks for new auto growth. But we're going to make sure we restrict the growth here to 2,000 or about 2 gigs. I'll say OK there. And now we need to go into options. I'll go into options here. And we need to set the collation for this database to be different from the server default. Don't ask me what this is. Like I said, I'm not a DBA. These are the settings that we'll follow, and that way we'll guarantee that it works. Because these are what the experts on this topic, primarily VMware, and of course Kendrick, he's installed it multiple times, but the VMware installation guide, they've got a massive script, I'll show you in just a second, that actually goes out and configures the database. But if your database name doesn't match exactly, or you want to change things, then you'd have to tweak that script. So here's the collation we want to set. Uh, there we go, Latin 1 General CSAS. I'll say OK here. And notice down here it's executing. It'll take just a minute to create the database. And then we can run that script we talked about. All right, with our database successfully completed, which we can see right here, the next thing we need to do is to run this script that does a slight modification to the database. So I'm going to get this script over from Kendrick's site. You can also pull it from the uh, VMware vCloud Director uh, Deployment Guide. Either way, you're going to have to do some slight modifications, most likely on the script, unless you use the exact same database name and username and password. All right, so here's the script over on Kendrick's site. I'm just going to copy it right here, do a Control-C, then let's go back into SQL. Then I'm going to go up here to New Query. And then I'm just going to paste it in here. All right, so we've got our script. Let me make this window a little bit bigger so we can see it better. Now, this is the name of the database starting right here at the top. So we called our database VCDDB. So we're just going to have to change that right here in each of these lines. All right, and then let's double check all the other lines and see if there's anything else we need to change. What this does is it goes in and sets the recovery mode configurations around snapshots that VMware vCloud Director needs. All right, so that's all we need to change from the script over at Kendrick's site. So now I can just go up here and click Execute. Gives us a little information here about the results of our script. And that's all we need to do with the script. So the script is done. There's one more thing we need to do here on SQL Server. And that is to go down and actually configure Microsoft SQL Server's network information. So I'm going to go down here to my Start menu. I'll go into All Programs. I'll go into SQL Server. 
the configuration tools here. Here we go, underneath configuration tools, SQL Server Configuration Manager. So I'm going to click on that. And what we need to do in here is to go into the SQL Server Network Configuration. I'll click on the protocols for VCD DB. Notice here the TCP IP is disabled. I'm going to right click on that, go into the properties, and I'm going to change this from enabled no to enabled yes. I'll say OK. And it says these won't take effect until the service has been stopped and restarted. So I'll say OK there. Notice now it says enabled. Let's go into the SQL Server services. I'm going to right click on the SQL Server. It says it's running. I'm going to click restart. And there we go. Our SQL database server has been restarted. We configured our database. We created a user. We created all sorts of custom configs that are required by vCloud Director on the database. We ran the script. We enabled TCP IP networking and we restarted the SQL services. All right. So at this point, the configuration of our SQL server for VMware vCloud Director is complete.